everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing part three of my A-level advice video series for each of my subjects. So obviously, as by the title of this video, today I'm talking about maths. But before I get onto that, I have a few things to mention. Firstly, I want to do a Q&A soon. So if you have any questions for me, please do comment those in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's just get on to the video. I'm just going to start off with my experience and what I've kind of noticed throughout AS Maths. So the first thing is the jump from GCSE to A level, because this tends to be something that people in year 11 worry about, like, am I just going to find it so ridiculously harder than GCSE? And with maths, I actually don't think there's that big of a jump. I don't think it's actually a jump at all. I'm doing the old spec, so I don't know what it's like with the new one, but from my friend, she said it wasn't that different at the start anyway. It's like a gradual shift in difficulty. You're not like going to the first lesson and being thrown into like all this crazy hard maths. The first chapter of C1 maths was algebraic fractions, which it was basically GCSE. It's not like a lot of other subjects where you literally kind of get slapped in the face. Maths is very, very gradual change. And the other thing I've noticed with maths is you won't be good at everything. And this isn't obviously exclusive to maths. This is in everything, but especially in maths, there is such great variation between the topics. Like even within the modules, like C1, C2, and we did S1, there's great variety of content so you go from like box plots to like normal distribution in stats but then you can go from like differentiation in c1 to trigonometry in c2 to like god knows what else radians and stuff and it's like it's a very different subject material and i know that a lot of people like myself really tend to strive to be the best at everything and they're just like i'm gonna understand everything i'm gonna be the best at everything and like that's not necessarily a good thing as crazy as that sounds it's really not because you cannot beat yourself up about not being able to do one specific part of the syllabus because there are so many other bits that you are gonna be good at because it's so varied that there will be something that everyone can do. And it's all right to lose a few marks in the exam on like a topic that you just tried to understand and you just can't do it. But at the same time, don't neglect revising for topics that you just don't understand. Don't be like, oh yeah, I don't understand that, so I'm just gonna leave it. You can do the questions to some extent. You can still get method marks if you know how to do them to an extent. So those marks are still marks gained and they're marks that are going to help you get the grade that you want. So don't just kind of neglect stuff that you just find a bit too difficult because it's going to be a shame if you miss out on your grade because you were too afraid to look at it. Now I'm going to move on to general advice and kind of how to cope with A-level maths. So my first piece of advice would be to make notes as you go along. And I feel like this is a mistake that quite a few people may make because you might be thinking, Magda, what you want, like maths is about practice, not content. And obviously it is more about like doing the questions, but there are like certain things that you just need to know. So for example, like what each graph transformation does. So if the number is before f of x, it stretches that way, I think. It's stuff like that that you just need to remember like little rules and in my opinion the best way to do that is to make notes on them and just keep them all in the same place so then you can just flick through them. My next piece of advice would be to be proactive and ask your teacher for help in the lessons if you don't understand and like if she's going too fast and you just don't follow stop her or him and ask them to explain it to you go to like after school sessions that your maths department runs if they offer them and just stuff like that like ask people for support who are able to help you what you're confused about probably relies on something very small and easy that just hasn't yet clicked or you need to be reminded of like basics in maths or something that you did quite a while ago which you just haven't pieced together that like that's how this new thing works kind of thing and I'm often in that position and I'm just sat there like what the hell and then I realized that it's so easy but like sometimes you can forget 
but asking your maths teacher, however stupid you may feel. The next piece of advice that I have for you is to identify the mistakes that you keep on making and focus on preventing these because you may be like, oh, I just lost a couple marks, you know, here, there. It's all going to add up and all the stupid mistakes could once again cost you your grade. So it's stuff like not rounding properly or reading the question wrong, which I did way too often in trig. Like it said, draw a sign graph and I drew a cos graph. And it's not just like the stupid mistakes. It's also mistakes that you keep making in like your actual working out. So you may keep forgetting to add this one stubborn step into your calculation. And over time, you can just like focus on remembering to put this step in. So when it comes to your exam, you know, you've you've got it sorted, you're, you're sorted. So you just need to kind of like help yourself out now for later. Another thing that I'd say is you just need to keep doing practice. I mean, everyone, well, hopefully everyone knows that maths is literally just about practice. You shouldn't really be doing past papers while you're still learning the content. Like maybe towards the end, yes, start doing a few, but while you're still like in the middle of doing it, you don't have enough experience yet to like answer enough questions. What you can be doing is doing like practice questions from the textbook, even like a few a day, just regularly practice. You don't want to be forgetting the key processes of like answering certain questions because then when it gets to exam time, you're literally going to have to relearn them all if you've left it too long between when you did it and the exam. The next thing I'm going to talk about is getting sucked into that black hole of doing questions that you know you can do and that you're good at because they make you feel good about yourself because in the long run they're probably going to make you feel pretty bad about yourself. If you find a topic easy then that's obviously brilliant but it also means that you don't need to be doing practice on it, like you don't need to keep going over it and spending a lot of time doing it, there's no point not at all. You should obviously not be doing nothing for those topics but you should focus more of your time especially earlier on in the year where you have time to spare on doing practice for the topics which you don't find as easy. It may just be a case of doing enough practice so you just know how to answer the questions in the exam even though you may not actually know what's going on, that's basically me in C2 trig. Like, I think I captured the moment of my first C2 pass paper in my revise with me video, and it was really pretty grim. But you just kind of learn how to answer the questions. Now, moving on to revision tips for maths and how you can revise most effectively. So, tip number one is going to be to watch YouTube videos and particularly for maths, I think this is a really, really good way of revising. Clearly, you actually need to be doing work and like practice questions and stuff yourself. But to be able to do similar questions in the future to the ones you're practicing now, you need to understand how to go about doing these questions. YouTube videos are definitely a great way to kind of figure it out because there are so many videos that you will find either going through like certain questions and how to answer these questions or explaining topics to you. Tip number two is going to be do past papers and this is kind of a no-brainer because you really need to be doing a lot a lot a lot of practice. Number one to get used to the layout of the exam. Number two, to learn how to answer specific questions. And number three, to develop a strategy for doing exam papers. So for example, do you leave like a question on radians until the end? Because you know that that one is gonna take you quite a while to figure out. And I find past papers to be a better resource than just doing questions out of the textbook because the standard of textbook questions isn't exactly the same as past paper questions. I don't like even necessarily mean in difficulty, it's just the type of questions sometimes in the textbook just really aren't how they're going to ask those questions in the actual exams. And also a big thing that some people may not realise is that when you're doing questions in a textbook, it's really not the same as doing past papers because you know what topic you're doing them on and you know exactly what you need to be doing to get the answer. Because, for example, the exercise 
of questions that you're doing comes right after an example that shows you how to do that type of question so obviously you know that that is what you have to do but when you're in an exam they're not going to tell you this question is about using the cosine rule to blah de blah de blah de blah like you have to figure it out yourself like what you need to be doing to answer that question they're not going to tell you and it's not going to follow on from like an example obviously and just to slip in a side note I know that I'm doing the old spec and I know that the new spec obviously isn't exactly the same that doesn't mean that you can't still be doing the old spec past papers as I've said before they're still helpful because every bit of practice helps if you search up exam questions by topic which some websites do those are especially useful because then if you're doing a topic on the new spec which was on the old spec you can just search that up online and get the past paper questions from the old spec and you can be doing practice on that certain topic instead of going through every single past paper to find it. Tip number three, I think, is if you get a question wrong in your practice, to try and figure out how to actually do it right by yourself. Don't just look straight on like Solution Bank and be like, what is the answer to this question or like not the answer but like how do I do this question because if you figure it out yourself you're training your brain to remember what to do when it's faced with this kind of question so if you do it wrong the first time and you just don't get the right answer then try and figure out what you did wrong and how you can do it right the next time you see this kind of question you can get it right from the get-go and it also means that you are not wasting your time in the exam trying to figure out how to do the same damn style of question as you have been practicing for months but you just can't remember how to do it because it's just not sticking. Doing it yourself is just the best way to remember it. For example, if you're taught to research a topic, you're probably more likely to remember that topic than if your teacher just gave you a handout and told you to oh, read this. Like, it's that kind of gist. Tip number four is going to be in the exam you need to check as many questions as you can. Don't just sit there after you finish and be like <laughs> I can have a rest, I deserve it. Because it's all about maximizing the number of marks that you can gain to therefore be able to lose some marks on the harder topics or like the questions that you literally cannot figure out how to do because there probably will be at least a water question like that on the exam. At least just look at the answer and just think to yourself, does this answer look vaguely right? And it's also stuff like, do I have the right units? Tip number five is gonna be quite a quick one, but it's find new fun ways to revise. So whether that be like with your friends, like go somewhere and just sit down and do a bunch of math questions, <laughs> that doesn't sound riveting but like it's better than sitting in your room and doing it yourself or like doing it through an online game obviously not fully just revising through an online game but just like if you have a few spare moments and you're just like I want to do some maths revision but I really just can't I'll be bothered to do the same thing again and again if you're letting your revision get too repetitive you're inevitably going to get bored and you are not going to want to do it and that's not the best when you have exams coming up and your grades depend on how much work you do, which is most often the case. We've reached that part of the video where I talk about, should you take A-level maths? And I don't think this is as big of a question for maths as it is for other subjects, because I feel like it's just very clear to most people whether they love maths, or not necessarily love maths, but can do maths, or whether they absolutely hate it and they cannot stand the thought of going to another maths lesson ever in their life you know it's not really like hmm like i like biology but like i don't know if i'm like good at biology it's like with maths i feel like it's quite obvious if you just cannot understand maths for the life of you it's it's not really trivial in that sense like you you either get maths or you don't Personally, I don't feel like maths is that bad of an A-level. Obviously, I can only speak for AS because I've only done AS, but I feel like if you put in the work, you can get a good grade out of it because your grade reflects so heavily how much work you've done and how much effort you've put into it. Even if you don't quite enjoy maths that much, like me, but you know that you need maths, 
to do the course at university that you want to do and you know that you can understand math then do it to like, or don't just think, oh, I'm not gonna like it, oh, it's gonna be living hell. Because if you have to spend two years of your life hating maths lessons, the fact that you can then spend the rest of your lifetime doing a job that you really love and that you've always wanted to do will make up for those two years of what seems like torture. The beauty of maths, to me, even though I don't really particularly like maths, is that you're not sitting for hours and hours on end memorizing basically crap that you're probably never going to use again in your life. Maths is obviously practice at doing questions and in my opinion that's a lot more fun because you're not constantly doing the same thing over and over like it's slightly different questions and it's like variety you know. And also it's really nice to like watch yourself get the hang of topics throughout like your revision slash practice like it's really nice you can think to yourself like a month ago I couldn't do trig at all and now I can answer the questions and get full marks like it's that kind of satisfaction. We are now at the conclusion of this video so I really hope you found it helpful in any way and enjoyed it somewhat so if you did enjoy it then do give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my channel the button is below this video it's bright red you cannot miss it and you can also follow my social medias the handles are in the description and that's pretty much all I have to say today so excuse the lighting because it's atrocious I know and excuse my appearance because it's also atrocious but I will see you in my next video Hopefully looking better than this. <laughs> Bye!